Theologian J. Gresham Macon put it this way about grace and law. He, he says this, and I thought it was interesting. It made me think this week. He says, a low view of law, a low view of law leads to legalism in religion. He says, a high view of law makes one a seeker after grace. And I think he's right. I think if we really get a taste of what the law is, and it's a beautiful thing, the law, but if we really get a taste of it and think honestly about our lives, you're going to be running as fast as you can after God's grace. The logic of grace, there's not really a logic to it. It's, it's in many ways irrational. The, the arithmetic of grace would get you failed in a math class. I mean, if grace starts making sense to you, if you're like, okay, I think I got it figured out, you, you're probably a long ways off. Because frankly, the notion of forgiveness and mercy at no cost as a gift presented by Jesus and the New Testament is something that doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't add up. Salvation. Salvation. Think about that. Not dependent on anything I do. Yeah, right. Getting forgiven of all of my sins, receiving the Holy Spirit in my life without having to earn that? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Grace is, is scandalously irrational. I mean, if you think about it. What is grace? What, what does grace look like? What does it feel like? Can something so scandalous so generous, so amazing, be real. Dr. Samuel Storms puts it this way, the first and most possibly fundamental characteristic of divine grace is that it presupposes sin and guilt. Grace has meaning only when men are seen as fallen, unworthy of salvation, liable to eternal wrath, Grace does not contemplate sinners merely as undeserving, but as ill-deserving. It is not simply that we do not deserve grace. We do deserve hell. So let's just, as, as we are on this journey of grace, we who have wandered from God and have been called home, as we're on this journey, let's just think of a, th- a few quick things this morning that you can take with you. The first, you can fill this out on your outline this morning, is that the story of the prodigal son is our story. It is your story. It's my story. We're not intended to hear this story and think, wow, if God is so good to the wild child, imagine how great he's going to be to me. I mean, the point of the story is not to say, man, if he is so good to a bad guy, what about a good guy? My friend, you are the bad guy. You may feel like the older brother sometimes. You may struggle with being the older brother. But you, if you have enjoyed God's grace, you are the prodigal. The second thing that I want you to remember today is that when we come to God, we come with empty hands. We come with nothing to offer. Now we know after looking at the law that every one of us is a lawbreaker. We know that we haven't kept the Ten Commandments and and a lot of other commandments in Scripture. And so I'm not only saved by grace, I live in grace. I hope in grace. It's my past, yeah, it's my present and it's my future. Everything I have, I received from him. The third lesson this morning, when a broken person comes back to God, I love this image of the character and personality of God. When a broken person comes back to God, he throws a party. I'm going to be real honest with you this morning. I I am a recovering legalist. I'm sure a lot of us are. I'm a recovering legalist. I, I, I love God's grace. I leap for joy in God's grace most of the time. Some of the time, I feel the cold, severe, <laughs> judgmental grip of the older brother's claws on my heart. But one thing I know <laughs> in the core of my heart is I don't want to be the one sitting on the outside of this party. 
I don't want to be grumbling, complaining, and bitter. I want to be right in the middle of the music, the laughter, the dancing. I know that God received me with open arms. And so I, I want to be here ready to receive the prodigals who are going to come back, the sinners who are going to come home to God.